Hello everybody, this is Greg, and today we're going to find out why Acts 23.5 is a really big deal. This is going to be a fun video. I can't believe I haven't done a video on this exact topic before, but let's get right into it. So, in Acts chapter 23, you've got Paul. He's standing before a council of the highest ranked men of faith, and you know the story. He's getting ready to make his defense, and the poor guy, he can barely get a word in, when the guy standing next to him is instructed by someone on the council to full out punch Paul in the face. He can't even hardly get a word out. Well, Paul didn't know uh, who it was that gave the order. It turns out it was Ananias, who was the high priest at that time. Uh, but Paul didn't know that. He responded in anger, probably as you and me and everybody else would have too, and uh, he called the guy a hypocrite. He said, you are a whited wall. That's how it's worded in the ESV. Uh, and he said, God is going to strike you. Well, then he um, finds out that he's the high priest. Now, here's the thing. Even though the council and the leadership are corrupt, when Paul is told that it was the high priest who had him struck, he relented and he quotes, this is what he does in verse 5 of that chapter. He cites Exodus 22, 8, which is a commandment from the law of Moses, which says, do not speak evil of a ruler of your people. Now, what does this say about Paul? This tells us that even though he's standing before a religious leadership, including the high priest, the guy who was responsible for knowing the commandments and teaching the people the commandments, but they're hypocrites. They are not practicing what they're preaching, Paul still publicly professes that he is going to do what they would not do, and he is going to live in accordance with the commandments. So in doing so, Paul makes it crystal clear that he believes the Torah is still the truth and the commandments and the covenant are still binding. Now, the guy, he had every right to rebuke that man uh, for what he had done to him unless he was a ruler of the people according to the Torah. So even in the heat of the moment, after being punched in the face when he did nothing wrong, Paul was able to keep calm and keep Torah. Now, in my years of walking with God, I have heard many people cite the Apostle Paul as their excuse for disobeying the commandments of God. I don't believe I've ever heard anybody try to use something that Yeshua said, uh, Jesus or Peter or John or anyone else, to try to push that idea that we don't need to keep the commandments. It's always Paul. Even though, and let's get to some scripture, scripture says things like Psalms 119, verse 89, Forever, O Yahweh, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens, meaning it can't change. Uh, just a little bit uh, later in the same chapter, in verse 160, it says, The sum of your word is truth, and every one, every one of your righteous rules endures forever. But in spite of this, you know, which you can read for yourself, people love following instead the instructions of men who say the commandments have been done away with, and it's always based on the writings of Paul. But check it out. After hearing what I have to say about this today, you are going to have to make an important decision about Paul that will affect how you read his letters from now on. Now, the the kind of the driving force behind this video is I've been told that Paul kept the Torah when he was around Jews who did, but that he did not bother keeping the commandments when he was around Gentiles who did not. I'm going to prove, absolutely prove, by Paul's own statements that this is not possible. Let's have a look at Acts 25, verse 8, where Paul himself says, "...neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar." Have I committed any offense? So late in Paul's life, he point blank declares he has committed no offense against the law in his dealings with the Jews. Now I'm telling you that is impossible if he did not keep the Torah with Gentiles. People who make this argument simply do not know the Torah. Paul said he didn't violate Torah, but we don't have to take his word for it. Let's hear it from someone else. Let's listen to what James and the elders said a few chapters earlier. Acts 21, 24. Take these men and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Thus, all will know there is nothing 
in what they have been told about you. What they have been told about Paul was that he was teaching people not to keep the law. He was falsely accused. And according to James, it says, uh, Thus all will know there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself live in observance of the law. Paul himself testifies, uh, and James also testifies. So Paul has other people vouch for him that he lives in observance of the law. And even years later, Paul still says that he's living in observance of the Torah. So let's get into the meat of this video. Let's test this idea that it's possible for Paul to be able to keep the Torah around Jews, but not around Gentiles. And the way we're going to do that is by going into the Torah. We're going to cruise through a lot of scripture quickly here. Exodus 12 49, it says, There will be one law for the native and for the stranger who sojourns among you. So in Yahweh's eyes, the Torah, the totality of the commandments, it is the same. There is not a different law for the stranger and for those born in Israel. I'm not going to depend on one verse. Probably won't depend on ten. I have a lot that we're going to cruise through. Leviticus 20, uh, excuse me, 1826 says, but you shall keep my statutes and my rules and do none of these abominations, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. What's funny is you've probably heard this argument too, that um, the law was for the Jews, not for the Gentiles. Proof, that's impossible. That's not true. Uh, Yahweh says, I don't care if you are a native born or a stranger. You, if you do these abominations, then you know there's consequences for it. Now, we're going in uh, order that these things happen. So let's look at Leviticus 19, 33 and 34. It says, When a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. So, we already saw a verse that says, in God's eyes, there's only one law. There's one set of commandments, and it's the same commandments for the stranger and for the native born. And here he says, I want you to treat the strangers exactly the same way as the native born among you. Now, there you go. I could stop right there. So Paul, if he treated the, uh, born, the Gentile born believers differently than the Jews, then he would not have been observing the Torah. There's a lot more coming. Leviticus 20, verse 1 and 2 says, Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, Say to the people of Israel, Any one of the people of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel, who gives any of his children to Moloch, shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So Yahweh didn't care if you were uh, of the house of Israel or you were a foreigner. If you were caught offering your children to Moloch, then you were to be stoned. So this proves absolutely that uh, worshiping other gods was not okay if you weren't of the house of Israel. Uh, this is absolute proof that in Yahweh's eyes, he doesn't care. Um, the scripture is going to say that very clearly here shortly. Leviticus 25, 23. This is a big one. Uh, it says, the land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine for you are strangers and sojourners with me. So even speaking to his own people, to the house of Israel, to the native born, he says, it's my land. Uh, Israel is not the land of the Jews. It is God's land. However, he says, you, even Israelites, are strangers and sojourners with me. So if God considers his own people to be strangers and sojourners, then of course he would expect strangers and sojourners to be treated exactly the same. No different. Numbers 9.14 If a stranger sojourns among you and would keep the Passover to the Lord according to the statute of the Passover and according to its rule, so shall he do. You shall have one statute, both for the sojourner and for the native. So Paul could not have treated them differently. He could not have kept the Torah around Jews and not kept the Torah around Gentiles because he would have been treating the people differently. But the fact is, Yahweh says there is only one law. Here is the verse that came to mind as soon as I started thinking about this. Point blank, Numbers 15, 15 through 16. For the assembly, for the, the church, for the congregation, that's what this word means, 
There will be one statute for you and for the stranger who sojourns among you, a statute forever throughout your generations, never changes. You and the sojourner shall be alike before the Lord. One law and one rule shall be for you and for the stranger who sojourns with you. So anybody who says that the law was for the Jews, have they have not been reading their Bible. Point blank, it says very clearly that the same Torah applied, the same commandments, the same rules, the same laws applied equally, whether you were you know, physically descended from Israel, Jacob, or not. No difference. In fact, uh, scrolling down just a little bit in that same chapter, verse 29 through 31, again, you shall have one law for him who does anything unintentionally, for him who is native among the people of Israel, and for the stranger who sojourns among them. But the person who does anything with a high hand, whether he is native or a sojourner, reviles the Lord, and that person shall be cut off from among his people, because he has despised the word of Yah and has broken his commandment. That person shall be utterly cut off. His iniquity shall be on him. More more proof. I mean, we're building a stack of proof that in Yahweh's eyes, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or if you are a Gentile. Uh, if you are among his people, then you are required to live exactly the same way. It doesn't matter what your nationality is. Um, this even applies to things related to temple cleanliness. Numbers 19, which is the uh, famous red heifer uh, chapter. You always hear stories coming up in the news about them finding a red heifer in Israel. Uh, this says, verse 10, And the one who gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash its clothes and be unclean until evening. And this shall be a perpetual statute for the people of Israel and for the stranger who sojourns among them. So the, the foreigners, the strangers, were still involved in these you know, things related to temple cleanliness purification, all of that, just showing that absolutely the law was not for the Jews. The Jews were only one of the 12 tribes anyway. There are 12 tribes. There were a lot more uh, in the house of Israel outside of the Jews. But Yahweh didn't care who you were from. He just wanted to know, are you going to love me and keep my commandments or not? Clearly, there is no difference in Yahweh's eyes between the native and the stranger when it comes to keeping the commandments. But now, let's listen to how Paul himself describes those who were born Gentiles. In Ephesians chapter 2, let's read 11 through 13. It says, Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ. And when you, when you were separated from Christ, you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and you were strangers to the covenants, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus and Messiah Yeshua, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood. Now, verse 19. So then, here it is. You are no longer strangers and aliens. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. At this point, this argument is completely destroyed. There is no difference. Uh, let's go to the favorite book of those who are not keeping the commandments, uh, Galatians. It's all because of misunderstanding. But even here in Galatians, he says, Paul, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male female. You are all one excuse me, in Messiah Yeshua. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. So if Paul would have treated Gentile-born believers any differently, then he, would have been, then he would have not been keeping the Torah. He would have been a hypocrite. He would have been writing one thing in his letters and then living it out differently. So to keep this video short and to the point, I'm going to close it out. I'm going to put a bow on it. James puts it perfectly. I can't say it any better than James 2.9 says, If you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as a transgressor. So if Paul treated the Jews differently than the Gentiles, then he would have been a sinner. If he lived his life differently, if he let a, uh, a Gentile get away with breaking the commandments and he didn't correct him or try to straighten him out, but he went around the Jews and then he did, 
then he would have been showing partiality. That's exactly what it means to show partiality, to have respect of persons, to treat one people group differently than another. If Paul did that, then he would not have been keeping the Torah. It is fake news. <laughs> Case closed. Thanks for watching. Bye.